everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and I create crafting content here on YouTube. In today's video, I have a really fun loop yarn project for you. So I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make this blanket right here. So what's really fun about this blanket is you can really customize it to your style or your need by picking out different colors and doing different color combinations or adding the stripes in different places. So I'm going to show you each of those steps along the way. Down in the description box below, you're first going to find basically the template to this pattern. So I'm going to tell you the number of loops I cast on for each of the rows and squares and the number of rows that I worked. So that way you can follow along with that document. The document will also tell you exactly how much yarn I used to create my size. That way if you wanted to customize this to make it larger or smaller, you can reference my weight and dimensions. Also down in the description box below, you're going to find a link to my other loop yarn videos. So I have one showing how to make a cowl and those are all featured on my website. So I'll link to that down below. Also on my website, you can find different crafting tutorials depending on what you're looking for. So knitting, sewing, different things like that. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave those down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my new videos. So let's get started. So starting off in front of me, I have all the yarn I'm going to be using for this project. So the specific yarn I'm using is Off the Hook, and this one's the Crayola version. It's by Lion Brand, and I ordered all of these directly from their website. I chose this yarn for two reasons. First was the cost effectiveness. So this yarn you can get in their Weekend Wow sale when you buy in quantities of five. It's for a fixed price, and I found it was a really good deal. And then second thing was for the availability. So I was originally going to make this blanket out of the Bernat Blankies, but I found that yarn to be really difficult to get during quarantine where it's on sale and in stock. It's a very difficult combination to find. Um, so I kind of just had to pass on this yarn. And I'm pretty happy with this alternative though. I feel like this has some really fun colors going on. So the quantities I have are first across the diagonal here. I have three of the multicolor ones. And so these multicolor ones are just made up of the yellow, the magenta, and the purple. And then to go along with each one of these multicolor ones, I picked out the base colors. So the purple one is called Royal Purple. The yellow one is Laser Lemon. And then the pink one is Magenta. And this multicolor one is Plush Berry. And if you're looking for a comparable yarn, each skein of this has three ounces or 85 grams, and it's the number seven jumbo yarn. A few of these do have more yardage on them. So like this one is 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. But the way I've designed this blanket is to be used where each one of these 85 gram ones can be one square of the blanket. So if you're using the larger ones, you could always increase the size of your blanket. So the way I've laid out my colors too is I decided to do the three multicolor ones across the diagonal. Then I have two purple ones on either sides of the center, two yellow, and then two pink. So I have a total of nine things of yarn here. So the game plan for how we actually create this blanket is we're gonna do it in strips. So for example, for the center strip, I'm first gonna cast on and work a square of this yellow then on top of that, I'm just going to switch colors and work a square of this multicolor. Then I'm going to work on top of that, just begin working the yellow, and we'll eventually just have like a strip of three colors. Then I'm going to do a strip over here and a strip over here. And then at the end, we're going to work up the middle and kind of loop them together and create that faux seam. So the only other materials you're going to need are going to be a pair of scissors. And that's just at the beginning and the end. We need to cut open a few loops to create a tail. And then if you find it helpful, it is a good thing to have some of like the little clips. I like to use hair clips or quilting clips. And basically this just helps me mark spots when I'm trying to count out numbers of loops. So first I'm going to get started and show you how to begin one square and the different dimensions we're going to be using. So the finished measurements of this blanket end up being 35 inches by 36 inches. So almost a perfect square of one yard by one yard. And in total, I used 25 ounces of the loop yarn. Here I have the layout for each of the three blocks. So this first block is the one we're starting with over here. 
So at the bottom, you can see we're gonna start out with a base of 18 loops. In the first color, we're gonna work 14 rows. Then we're gonna to switch to the next color, work another 14 rows. Switch to the final color in this set, and there we're gonna work 15 rows. Then across this top edge, we're just gonna leave those open loops. Okay, so here I have my bottom right-hand color. And so for this color, the first thing I've done here is I've just cut open three of the loops. So you just find one of the loops, take a pair of scissors, and then just cut it right here at the bottom in between where the two sides meet. That'll break open a loop. So I wanna cut, I already cut open three of them. And now I'm gonna count 18 loops across. So now I've marked that 18 loop location. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take that 19th loop and I'm gonna thread that into the 18th loop. Then I'm gonna take the next loop over here on the right, thread that into the 17th loop and keep on going across. So I'm threading a new loop into each one of these existing 18 loops going from right to left. So once I go across, I just like to go across the top and just pull upwards on each one of my new loops. And that helps to even everything out and make sure everything stays aligned. And then I also like to flip over my work and make sure there are no extra loops on the back. So this all looks good. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take the next loop on my strand of loops and I'm gonna go back into that first stitch. Now I'm gonna go across the opposite direction. So now I'm gonna take the next loop, go into the second stitch and keep on going all the way across. Now I'm gonna continue for a total of 14 rows. So now I've continued working row after row for those 14 rows. And now what I wanna do is I wanna count over three loops from where it ended. Then I'm gonna cut this color. And then I wanna open up each one of those final three loops. Now next up, I'm gonna take the next color that I wanna work with. So again, this is going up one of the columns. So this was the bottom right hand, and I want the middle right hand color. And on this one, I'm gonna cut open the first three loops. And now I'm just gonna begin working with this color across the next row. Just as if I were still working with the same color, all I've done is switched here. So take the first, first purple loop, go through the first loop here, and continue all the way across. And now I'm gonna go back and forth, working exactly the same number of rows again. And just a reminder too, real quick, you always wanna flip over your work as you go along and make sure there are no extra loops hanging off the back here. Cause that way, if you find an extra loop like one or two rows back, you can always go back and fix it real quick. So now that I finished this full panel, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over three loops at the end. And again, I'm gonna cut my yarn and then open up those final three loops. For this next set, we're gonna begin with 19 loops. Then again, we're gonna work the same 14 rows in the first color, switch to the second color, work another 14 rows, switch to the final color, work the 15 rows this time, and then we're gonna leave those open loops at the top. Lastly, we're gonna work the third set of colors. So this third one is exactly the same as the second. So we're gonna begin with 19 loops, 
work up 14 rows, switch colors, another 14 rows, switch colors, and then the final 15 rows. And again, we're gonna leave those open loops at the top. So here are my finished three panels. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna connect these different panels together. So the way I'm gonna go about doing this is I'm gonna go down the rightmost panel. So let's say I'm connecting this panel to this panel. I'm gonna take this right panel over here and I'm gonna go all the way down this right, or sorry, leftmost <laughs> stitch and I'm gonna unloop this entire column. So I'm just going all the way down, unlooping every one of these stitches over here. So you just pull the top stitch out from behind. So now that I've unlooped that entire left stitch all the way down, what I want to do is I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to take the, la the first stitch on this right panel and go up into the center of the first stitch on the next panel over. Then I'm going to go up to my next loop, go through the next stitch on the next panel over. And I'm just going to continue going all the way up this column, threading each one of these loops through the final most stitch on the center panel. And a good way to check is every time you switch colors, you should be switching colors of the loops you're pulling through as well. Now what I want to do is I want to loop all the way up this row. So to do that, I'm going to hold on to my bottommost loop, thread the second loop through that bottom one, then pull up, take the next second loop, thread it through the new bottom loop, pull up, and just keep on going all the way up this row. So now as I'm approaching the top, I'm gonna to keep on threading up through the pink as much as I can. And now up here at the top, what I wanna do is I wanna take my last free pink stitch, thread it through my first free um, yellow stitch. So like my last one in the first column, through my first one in the second column. And then I'm just gonna loop upwards one more time. Okay, so now I'm just gonna leave this seam exactly as it is and leave the top edge exactly like this and move on to the second and third panels. And next, I'm gonna undo the leftmost column of the second panel and attach it over here to the right panel exactly as we did here. So the last step here is gonna to be to go across this top edge and cast off. So to cast off, I'm gonna start at the upper left-hand corner and the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take the first two loops, take the second loop here, thread it through the middle of the first loop, then just kind of pull upwards on it. Take the new second loop, thread it through that first loop, and continue going all the way across this top edge, casting off each one of the stitches. Now the last thing I need to do is flip the blanket over to the back side. And now I wanna go around and I wanna first take any place where these two ties come together. So in these little four-way corners, I'm just gonna tie a little knot and then I'm gonna weave in these ends. So to weave in the ends, I just follow the pattern of a few of the stitches. And then I would just cut that tail and repeat for all the ends on the blanket. So this last little bit is completely optional. I think it just adds a fun little texture to the blanket. And what I've done is I've just added an extra loop row going all the way across. 
So this does two things. First, it just adds fun texture. And then second, it helps to prevent the blanket from rolling or kind of like curling in on itself. So you can see how it's a little curling in on itself up here. So all I've done is I've taken a bunch of my extra loops, which I have over here. And for each set of two blocks, I chose a contrasting color. I just went across perpendicular to how I previously went. So previously I was going up each one of these stripes. And for this row up here, I'm gonna go from left over to right. The first thing I'm gonna do as always is I'm gonna cut open my first three loops. And now this part, threading them through can be a little bit tricky. But what I find is easiest is I'm gonna first find the opening of the first loop. And you can do this on either color side. So you can do it on the multicolor side or the solid purple side, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna take the first loop on this strand, thread it through the first opening here. Now I wanna find the next loop. So you don't wanna go in the next hole. It's actually gonna be two strands of yarn over. I'm gonna thread the next yellow loop through that hole. Then again, it's gonna be two strands over. It's gonna be the center of the next loop. Thread the next one. And I'm gonna keep on going all the way across this first set of colors. Now I'm just gonna check on the back side to make sure I don't have any extra loops, which I don't. So now once I finish that color, I'm gonna cut out that color again, leaving three loops at the end. And then I'm gonna open up each one of those three loops. Now starting at the outer edge where I started, again, I'm gonna take the second loop, thread it through the first loop, then pull back over towards the right, take the new second loop, thread it through the new first loop, and keep on going all the way across these yellow ones. Now I'm just gonna rejoin another color here. So here I'm gonna do the purple. So again, I'm just gonna open up the first three loops and then begin threading them through and add them right onto this row. Once I've made it all the way over to the other side, I'm actually gonna stop one short. So I'm not gonna thread through this final stitch down here on the edge. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna count three loops over, cut my yarn, and now again, open up these last three loops. Now I'm gonna thread this tail up through where that final loop would have gone. Thread the tail through the final loop that I have up here. Now I just wanna stretch that loop over and then bring the tail back down to the other side of my work. So thread it through somewhere at the end here. And now I'm just gonna weave in each one of these tails that I have that I created from adding in those extra loops. So this is how my finished blanket turned out. And what's so fun about this is you can really customize it by using different colors or by adding these little stripes in different areas. It's really as far as your imagination can take you. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave those down below. And down in the description box, you're gonna find the link to my website where you can see my other loop yarn patterns, as well as my other knitting and crafting tutorials. I'll see you next time.